Now, fellas, if I had a nickel for every time a YouTuber has tried to quote-unquote expose me for selective evidence and then got cancelled for being a weirdo themselves, I'd have two nickels. It's just weird that it happened twice. So, for context, I think back in last October, a YouTuber once again tried to cover the drama involving me and some allegations from the past. Honestly, people wonder why I don't take it fucking seriously anymore. It's just because every time someone covers it, it's just absolute clown behavior, and I just cannot stand to sit there and entertain the idea. Like, it's really hard to take it seriously when you've been battling the same accusations for five years, and people don't see that they're subject to change in human behavior and the way people handle things. For context, a lot of this stuff came from me when I was 19 years old. I have just turned an adult a year ago, year prior, and there's a lot of stuff in this that I'm going to get into, so, and to make sure I don't miss anything this time, I have an entire list of the victims, and I guess we're just going to fucking go over it and cover it, so no one can debate that there's any victims left, because boy oh boy, did Peaches just not give a fuck about the research involved. She didn't reach out, I reached out to her in an email, offered to let her interview me for any information that was required or to debunk any accusations, no fucking response. So, if there's any responsibility for portraying this information in a negative light, it is Peach's fault. She's a 100k fucking YouTuber. It is her job to fact check the information before posting it publicly for her audience, which, by the way, really tried to harass me and utterly failed. A lot of their comments were just them trying to accuse me of pedophilia, just for them to get blacklisted by YouTube in the first place because YouTube doesn't allow that kind of comments or content in the comment section anymore. And it's very wrong for anybody to call anybody a pedophile based on a speculatory video, which her own video says at the start it's literally fucking speculation. But I, I guess people don't fucking listen. I mean, that's just basically her own legal loophole of trying to get out of problems anyway, so maybe it's just a fucking skill issue. Alright, here's page one, let's just fucking jump into it. I find it so ironic that Bunny Queen was the first victim, because while she is attempting to be the most vocal about it, and painting herself as the biggest victim, she really fucking wasn't. The screenshot she showed was me saying something inappropriate, allegedly, and then her stating her age, and then me asking her to delete it. I think there was also a video of me confronting her, and they tried to paint that as blackmail. In reality, Bunny had been privately going around to my friends and accusing me of pedophilia, saying that I groomed her, or tried to coax her into nudes, or some other bullshit, so we confronted her on a call, and I don't know if it was us that recorded that, or her that recorded that, but taking that kind of shit out of context and trying to paint it as blackmail is awful. The reason that video exists, because despite me saying in the clip that I was going to make a video on it if she didn't knock it the fuck off, I actually didn't want to make a video on it. Not because I didn't care, but because I couldn't be fucked to go back and repeat myself for the 9 millionth fucking time involving this person. And again, if Hopeless Peaches would have reached out and talked to us, she would understand that context. She doesn't have to fucking believe me, I mean, it's my word against bunnies, but then again, you don't see me consistently trying to get Bunny Queen banned off Twitter, that's all Bunny Queen does on her account. She hides behind a block, waits for anybody to reply to my side of the story, and then tries to push her thread onto them, which is also full of just egregious misinformation. Not to mention a fuck ton of fat shaming. She really seems big on fat shaming. Like, I know I used to be pretty big, but I've lost a fuck ton of weight and I've been working out a lot. I just don't post about my body publicly because I'm a VTuber now. It's not something I fucking actively do. On top of all of that, she also likes to claim that basically anybody that has a GXG tag in their name on Twitter is immediately a fucking alt. Which is crazy, because they're not, and they actively work with other members of GXG. Just because they don't have public identities, and they don't fucking stream, and they don't post pictures of their fucking face, doesn't mean that they're not real. It means they're behind an NDA. I know Bunny's a little silly, so I'll explain what an NDA is. A non-disclosure agreement. And every girl that we sign with that is an official property of GXG signs this NDA so that their public identity can't be revealed without their permission. And guess what? In this instance, they asked not to have their public identity revealed. So it's crazy. What do you want from us, Bunny? Do you want us to fucking dox them? Do you actually want to respond to this video this time, or do you want to hide behind Hopeless Peaches while she's busy talking to minors in some art server about porn and shit? Granted, there is times in my life where we had not filtered out people talking about pornography, but I've never purposefully went out of my way to send art to anybody that was of a not-safe-for-work-variety. 
If I did, that's completely my bad, but it doesn't mean that I'm purposefully trying to groom minors or anything. It just means that I needed to age gate a lot harder. Alright, this next one's about Cindy. This shit's about to get real fucking heavy. First off, who the fuck decided to include Cindy's real name in this fucking document? That is completely irresponsible, but seeing as how it's been out there for quite a while now, I guess she either doesn't care or didn't opt into this document in the first place. If she did, that's on her, because the Cindy story is just horrendous, and I avoided talking about it for a very long time. A lot of my close friends know about it, and we just kind of just weren't involved with it at all. Cindy met me when I was, like, just about to turn 18. I was just about to graduate from high school and do the YouTuber thing full-time while balancing college. Now, the moment, I mean, like, literally, like, a few weeks after I turned 18 and we were fighting with her ex-boyfriend over some stupid shit, she privately came to me and told me, hey, I'm not 16 because, you know, 18 and 16 is not a problematic age gap. I just turned 18. She went ahead and fucking told me, oh, I'm not 16, I'm 14. And at the time, I didn't know what to fucking say, because I asked my other friends, and no offense, my friends aren't exactly the best at giving advice, and they just said, it's whatever, it's a four-year age gap, it's not that weird. Spoiler alert, it felt very weird, because it was very clear, very on, that there was a huge mind gap between me and Cindy. Granted, she was 14, so it's, it's very obvious that she was like that. The problem here is that these people try to paint it as if I purposefully stayed with Cindy. No, Cindy wasn't exactly the nicest about it. The first time I tried to leave, Cindy tried to threaten to kill herself. And I know that's some heavy shit, but that is actually what fucking happened. And she actively threatened to harm herself all the fucking time. That is what kept me staying, because I, one, didn't want to get cancelled, and two, didn't want her to kill herself, because if she did, she said she was going to leave me in her suicide note. So as you can see, being forced into a scenario like that, and not knowing what to do due to my lack of people knowledge and real world experience, kind of fucking sucks. And I get it, if you guys think I was irresponsible for playing along with it, that's fine. But I tried to avoid this woman in any sexual topics at all, unless I was forced into them by her. And a lot of this happened in VC, so having screenshots of it doesn't count for shit. Any screenshots of me desperately trying to get her to come back was because I knew that if she fucking left, she would eventually come crawling back, demanding that I stay with her, and when I said no, she threatened to kill herself. So that just was not a fun time, like, at all. And I'm sorry that I fucking hid or didn't talk about it for a long time, but as you can tell, this has fucked me up for quite a while. Like, I'm in therapy because of this shit. And the audacity to claim that she's a victim of it, I get that she was a child at the time, but what kind of child threatens to kill themselves because you would you didn't want to be with them? It's fucked up. Okay, let's move on to Dee Dee. Dee Dee was certainly an odd character. See, I met Dee Dee and she told me she was 19. That is what I explicitly remember, that's what my friends remember at the time. And while they don't want to be involved, if they were directly asked, they would probably either say they didn't know or that she was 19. Because if I was around her and she was not of age and I was trying to get with that, my friends would have not been okay with that. Because my friends aren't fucking weirdos. They backed me through the Cindy shit knowing that I couldn't fucking do anything. They begged me and pleaded to get out of that situation and I tried so fucking hard. But with Dee Dee, it wasn't that bad because I was not attached to Dee Dee and Dee Dee was not threatening to kill herself. Rather, Dee Dee was threatening psychopathic tendencies and shit and just saying the most absurd and out-of-pocket things I've ever heard from another woman. And granted, I think I've seen Dee Dee a handful of times. She didn't look what how old she was, but it turns out that Dee Dee was actually 14. And at this time, I didn't know if it was appropriate to cut off people that said they were fans of your work and your audience, so I just kind of let her do her own thing in the DMs, but after she started saying that she wants to, like, kill dogs and stab her family, I was just kind of off that boat as soon as possible, and then later on we found out about her age, and she kind of disappeared. Later on, we would just be filming some Roblox video, I think it was some rap battle server, and this, this woman popped up in a Satan avatar, nobody knew who the fuck she was, and it was crazy, because I was like, who the fuck are you? Because she clearly knew who I was, and was saying some really cryptic shit, pretending she was some kind of victim. In reality, she lied about her age, she's kind of a psychopath, nobody wanted her around, and even if I was sexually involved with her, I didn't fucking know at the time. But I wasn't. So... I guess that's that. Alright, this next one is Gotham's Alpaca. Gotham wasn't really a victim. I don't even know if she opted to be in this document, and if she did, that would be a mistake on her part, because I was informed that she was, you guessed it, 18. I think later on I found out she was 16, distanced myself a bit, and then later on she left because I tried to get with her older sister. To be fair, her older sister was kinda hot, and she actually was legal at the time, so 
My bad. Alright, let's next move on to Kyla. Kyla was another weird story because I think that she was a part of this family RP server that everybody had going on and I was just kind of a part of. I don't remember if I owned it or if my me and my friends founded it, but it was just some RP server where we'd invite anybody and it wasn't necessarily not safe for work. There were channels that were not safe for work and I think at the time we trusted that Discord would lock those channels, you know, because Discord's responsible for the people on their platform platform and while well, at the time I didn't think I was responsible for it I didn't realize that anybody could just click into it say they were 18 and then that was basically it also just gonna throw it out there the only evidence was an Instagram post where I said embrace it baby I call everyone baby and baby girl uh, there was no romantic involving with this person like at all so thank you for misappropriating that peach is very cool Next, let's move on to Maze Lee. I, I don't recognize that name. Okay, so I'm gonna start this out with the fact that you are putting people in this document where you do not have a clarification of their age and you're just trying to showcase me being sexual in general, that is fucked up. A lot of people are like, there's 16 victims. It's like, no, there's a few people that are alleging they're victims, and there's a few others that are clearly not opting into this document. If you don't know their age, that means you didn't reach out to them. If you didn't reach out to them, they never wanted to be a part of this. And if they never wanted to be a part of this, then that means you are taking advantage of the fact that they probably either don't know they're in this document, or didn't want to be a part of it. I don't know who Maisley is. I don't remember this person. A lot of these screenshots could subjectively not be real, as I've stated before in other videos, so bear with me if I just say, I don't know who this is. Like, it's like, um, it's like, um, not receiving your Amazon package, and then they ask you for proof that the package was not there. It's like, the fuck am I gonna do? Show you an empty hand? As you can see, the package isn't here. It's like, no, that's not how that works. You have to have definitive proof before you accuse anybody of anything, and just because a few other girls are saying that I did something wrong, it doesn't mean that immediately every girl that says something about me said something wrong. Bunny Queen's the biggest example of this, where she'll just actively claim shit on Twitter and say it without any fucking jurisdiction. It's just, trust me, bro. It's like, lady... The only people trusting you are people that have no bearing on the situation and see your post and they're doing this believe all victims crap. I'm sorry, but after Slazo, Quite, and Johnny Depp, I don't do believe all victims. That is some bullshit. Like, trust me, if you have a justifiable amount of evidence, I will fucking believe you right on the fucking spot. But if you're just telling me to trust you, I'm sorry, no can do. Makes me an asshole, sure. But, as I've said before, I don't market myself as a nice person, I'm not pretending to be a nice person, I've actively made it known that I do not fucking care. Oh boy, it's time to talk about Mythical. So here's some context for Mythical, right? Mythical was a part of our friend group for a while. Like, we met her, she was a fan of our work, she was a fan of other people we worked with's work, she looked up to a lot of people, and up until we finally actually became friends with her, nobody had any idea how old she was because we just couldn't tell. Like, again, we're all just a, by a bunch of naive either teenagers or people that just turned legally the age of consent. We really didn't know any better. But Mythical was completely chill with all of it. And keep in mind, Mythical's now like 18. She is a grown-ass woman. And contrary to the belief of the video, because Mythical was used as the tagline in the entire video of me yelling at someone's mom, yeah, um, Mythical still hangs out with us. And she didn't opt in to be a victim in the document. In fact, she's in my VC every other fucking day, actively playing games with us, or talking about JJK. I still have her added on Discord. I'm not gonna give her fucking at, but if you actually want to, like, do the effort and go find this woman and ask her, she'll probably tell you, yeah, I don't want to be involved in all that bullshit. As she said a lot of times to a lot of our mutual friends, but... It's ironic, seeing as how StriderFan28, who was an ex-friend of ours, who's also in this document, I, I cropped the list so it, it didn't show, but she is in this document, you can go and check for yourself, actively tried to convince her and other people to stop talking to me because of the Peaches video. And it's ironic now that Peaches is getting exposed for sharing porn to minors that she, it, it's like, that's what she was calling me out for, right? There's a video in this document saying that I shared pornography to minors. If I actually did, that is my bad. There is no physical intention of trying to share it to anybody under the age of 18. If there's any actual solid evidence that isn't a speculatory, like, is this my account screenshot? Or is this striker actually posting it? If there's a video of it and that video confirms that I did it, that is completely on me and I am sorry. I have never once intentionally tried to put any children in danger, let alone anybody else. I'm just 
I, I'm, I'm a dummy, and unlike Hopeless Peaches, I will just straight up own up to it. If I actually did those things, and it's not fake, I'm sorry. However, I would like some actual substantial proof that it was me on those accounts. And you're probably thinking, well, I mean, you're the guy being accused. Why are you asking for proof? That's what I'm fucking saying. A lot of this shit is five years old. Do you remember everything that you did five years ago? Because I sure fucking don't. And a lot of it is just explicitly defamatory. Like, they're not showing that I actually said or did those things, they're showing screenshots, and I've been faked with screenshots before, I've had people actively lie, including Bunny Queen, so forgive me if I'm skeptical, but I'm not just gonna own up to something because you called me out for it and showed a screenshot of an account, but didn't show any user ID, didn't show if it ever appeared in a video, I think there is a video clip of me allegedly doing it, but, again, Hopeless Peaches got cancelled for the exact same shit. So, if you want to be mad at me for that, or you want to think it was weird that I did that, you're free to think I'm weird. I also find it funny that Bunny Queen backed both these people, not because she actually cared what their content was, but because it confirmed how she felt. Because, at the end of the day, Bunny Queen will never admit when she's wrong. She just actively tries to portray that she is a victim and wants to push that onto other people. But, as seen with For No Good Reason and his pedophilia accusations, and then again with Hopeless Peaches and her current, right now accusations that she was in a server doing horrendous shit with minors and art and talking about some absurd fucking bullshit, you would think that somebody that has a hundred thousand subscribers wouldn't be sharing pornography to minors. That's a no-no. The difference is, is that a lot of mine is alleged. Hence why I still have supporters, and hence why a lot of my friends who actually know me, and know these people, a lot of them who are accusing me, or included in this document, they know damn well that is not the fucking case, or there is some shit being taken out of context, and that is not cool. The next one is Noxie. This one's actually pretty open and closed. Yeah, so Noxie's not a fucking victim at all. Like, Noxie, one, didn't even know she was in this document, and you can reach out to her and ask her yourself, because she's also a public YouTuber, she's got a bigger sub count than I do, and she never opted in to be a part of this document, like, at all. And I'm being dead ass. She, she didn't even know until I openly went to her and told her, hey, you're in this document. And the, are you fucking kidding me? The screenshot is me telling her that the, like, the, the sketchers stay on during sex. Like, you're, you're fucking with me. That, that, that is the full extent of you claiming that I am a predator. I, is this a joke? I, is this serious accusation a fucking joke? Who made this document? Are they, are they trying to be a clown? Because that is clown behavior at its finest. The Skechers day on during sex. Yes, saying that to anybody randomly would immediately make you a groomer. You're so fucking smart. You, you see why I don't take this document very seriously? You see why I don't take anything these people say very seriously? Because they'll take any fucking example of you saying anything sexual as certified proof that you're trying to fuck a child. It's fucking weird. Next is Pink Bear Girl. I actually don't have much knowledge on this one. Yeah, so I'm gonna come out right at the gate and say, I don't know how old this person was, if they ever stated their age, that's my bad for forgetting, but I don't remember having any intimate, sexual, or weird relationships with this person, and I also don't even recall them being a minor. If I remember, they were an Instagram artist, and they had like an OC of like a panda bear that like, is like secretly a trap, and she would always dress it up in like bandages and stuff. I don't remember specifically if that is who this person is, I could be 100% wrong, but it just goes to show you that a lot of these people, I don't know who they are, and they've never publicly spoke up about it, unless I'm completely wrong, and there is, but if there is a public statement about it, I would gladly like to retract from it, but nobody ever sends me this shit. Nobody ever interviews me for this shit, they just make these fucking documents and start alleging things, and it just gets really fucking messy, and then they wonder why nobody takes them seriously. This entire document has been around since the, like, you know, five years. This is not new knowledge, there is rarely anything new added to these things. It is quite literally, and I mean quite literally, just a copy and paste of the original document made by Mar, Artemis, and Bunny Queen, but, somebody went back and decided to actually organize it because those three were trying so hard to grab literally anything that could be used as circumstantial evidence to try to make me look bad. They, they, their, their evidence was that I was toxic. And I, I said the N-word. But in reality, they didn't have a clip of me saying the N-word. I publicly owned up to being around people who thought it was okay for me to say the N-word, despite me being white. Granted, all of my friends are Mexican, Latino, Black, or Brown. And they kept saying that I had the past, but in reality, the public sphere has decided, and, you know, my white-ass skin, and me personally, decided I wasn't allowed to say the N-word. So, yeah, I, I used to say the N-word, just like every other fucking edgy Call of Duty kid. Uh, I don't hate black people. 
Do you think that should be blatantly fucking obvious? Unless your name is Radio because you bully me on Fighter Z and you're mean and stupid! Uh, you wanna call me racist? Go fucking ahead. I'm not gonna pull the, I had a black girlfriend, or I had a black friend. No, I, I, I donate to the fucking, uh, I donate to all Black Lives Matter. It's like, I, I don't fucking care. Not to mention, wasn't this document supposed to be about me being a pedophile? Why is there transphobia accusations in here? Well, let's see, ladies and gentlemen. Bunny Queen's the one that reached out to her. Bunny Queen's the one that keeps pushing it. The new document popped up out of nowhere. Guys, I'm starting to think the Bunny Queen made the new document, but that's just a theory. Okay! I actually miss MatPat, I'm sorry. Next is, oh, Red Blue Player One. This one's actually quite funny. Now I'm gonna be blatantly obvious with you. I just told you that I used to say the N-word because I was an ignorant piece of shit. I don't say it anymore, and I think that's blatantly obvious because there's no actual clip of me ever saying the N-word. If Unless you've gone digging and you must mysteriously have one, but that's not what this issue is about, is right? It's about grooming. So, with Red Blue Player One, she used to hang around our group. She wasn't really close to any of us. A lot of us just wouldn't censor ourselves, and if she we said anything or did anything that made it sound like we were actively trying to pervert or groom them, that's not the case. We barely knew this person. We didn't even know what they looked like. We didn't even know their age until later on when I made a joke about trying to eat their ass, which, by the way, I actively do those jokes towards everybody. I don't seek out minors to try to make these jokes. It is just a joke or a system of jokes that I make because I myself am a very not safe for work person. I'm a not safe for life person, if we're being realistic. So that's my fault. If I said something inappropriate to her, that is my fault. I clearly said after the joke, which is in the fucking thumbnail, but it's ironic because Hopeless Peaches painted it as if it was some kind of perverted thing. It literally says, ew, I'm no longer hungry. What the fuck do you think that means, Peaches? It means that she said she was young and I was no longer fucking interested. I think you should take the fucking hint and stop trying to paint it as me thinking that it was just some fucking issue where I knew it beforehand. I clearly didn't know it fucking beforehand. Why do you think I said, ew, I'm not hungry? And ironically, this person tried to make me stop saying the N-word, and I said no, because the, my friends at the time said that was censorship and it was wrong. And, you know, really short-sighted point of view. I understand. I get that. But instead, right after, she started threatening me, saying that she was going to go public with something. I was like, what are you going to go public with? And then she started saying that I fucked her, which was a repeat of literally everybody else before her. It's, it's a, like a, it's a conga line of, I meet woman, woman isn't very stable, or woman comes from a very drama side of the internet. I tell woman thing that she doesn't want to hear. Woman decides that she's going to accuse me of pedophilia, or grooming, or some other bullshit. It doesn't work out for them, and they fade into obscurity. I'm not even sure if Red Blue Player 1 is still around, but at the time, she tried to get me caught in a sting operation with some other fucking YouTuber, and I found out about it and emailed that YouTuber, and we both laughed about it, because he was like, he's like, you better not be fucking them kids. I was like, no, I'm not fucking them kids. I want big booty black women. And he laughed his ass off, and that was the end of it. And later on, I made a video about her, because at the time, I was still making how she's calling me a groomer, and then she's doing that to other people. Like, reaching out to Mayo M, who was another friend of the channel, and trying to get him to give her information, and then trying to, like, coax him into feeling like he's a victim. That was hilarious. Because I think it's very obvious if somebody feels like they're a victim, they're going to make their own choices about it. And I get why some people wouldn't come forward when it comes to victimology. But in this instance, it is very clear that these people aren't victims, and a lot of them didn't opt into it, so I just find it hilarious when people try to turn it as if they asked to be in this document, or they confided and, like, said publicly, yeah, this is what happened, and he was trying to do that. Red Blue got called out for trying to do that, and the video was hilarious. It can't be up on YouTube, because I said a lot of out-of-pocket out of shit that would be considered harassment, and the video was just gone. So, take with that as you will. I'm not that kind of person anymore. I don't say harassing statements or personal attacks or tell people to go and like low tier God themselves because I've matured as a person and turned my life around. It seems like a lot of people just don't understand that because they think that these accusations are recent, like they just happened, but a lot of them don't even have match dates. A lot of these screenshots can't even pr be proven to be legitimate because a lot of them just don't have an exact time period. Even with Bunny Queen's own screenshots, there's a lot in those fucking screenshots that just show that she didn't take them on the same date or they were created on a different date or didn't add up with the time frame at the time. So it's very clear she either faked them, took them out of context, or had somebody disguise themselves as me, go on an alt, say some shit to her, and then take screenshots of it. Which is fucking pitiful, because Red Blue Player 1 
was one of the people that actively tried to believe her. But then again, what do I expect? They're all a bunch of kids, and they all did a bunch of stupid shit. They fucked around, they found out. Don't accuse people of pedophilia unless you have the gall to back it up. It's that simple. I don't care if you're a victim. I don't care if you think you're a victim. If you're going to accuse people of a sex crime or a heinous fucking action, you should probably have the proof to back it up. Otherwise, a lot of people aren't going to believe you. And that's why a lot of people don't believe Bunny Queen. And the ones that do, they're just objectively a little slow. All right, we're on to page two. This one is consistent of talking to people inappropriately, I guess. Yeah, so Pepper Jack Cheese, aka Linda, aka I'm not gonna say her real name because I'm not a piece of shit, you know, like the person that made this document where they would just use people's real names, I bet, without even asking. So let's get into this real quick. Linda is Mythical's best friend, kind of friend. They know, they've known each other for like since they were kids and they are both 18 now, keep that in mind. Linda actually works with me actively she's the one that illustrated that drawing that hopeless peach has just decided to take for her thumbnail without crediting or asking by the way thank you for that and on top of all of that isn't a victim she never opted in or asked to be a victim she was included in this document without even being consensually asked or anything and i get it if you want to deem something inappropriate or say that something's inappropriate that is completely fine but I don't think actively speaking on behalf of another person when they've literally not asked you to is a great fucking idea. Let's see, we already went over Pink Bear Girl and Red Blue Player One. Let's fucking talk about Strider. Okay, so this one's ironically gonna get me a lot of flack. Not because anything inappropriate happened, but because Strider is an adult and she was 19 when we met. This was not like in my 19 year old age. This was like later into the years. And the thing is with Strider is that she was kind of forced into our friend group. See, at the time we were talking to this guy named Andbone, and Andy and us in this group just aren't really associated with it anymore. He doesn't really talk to our main group. I believe the term was excommunicadoed. It's not that it's anybody's business in the slightest, but Andy and our group has had a falling out. But at the time when Andy was a part of this group for a very long time, he had a girlfriend named Strider. They fell out for a lot of various reasons, and I don't have his explicit permission to talk about the personal reasons, but all I can say is, is that Andy, if he were to come forward and talk about the things he experienced with Strider, Strider would not have a very good presence online anymore. Not to mention that there was just a lot of personal and weird factors I won't get into about Strider that made her very unlikable. She would do a lot of annoying things, which would consist of just the puppy dog behavior with Andy, where she would consistently dick ride him for hours at a time, not literally, thank God, and even he would get annoyed with it. And it left a very bad taste in her mouth for a lot of people in the group. Not to mention that, like, like and this is what I find the funniest, is that she was in cahoots with Hopeless Peaches behind the scenes, even trying to score an interview, hence why I sent the email that I sent to Hopeless Peaches, which is publicly on my Twitter page right now, and you can discuss it if you want to. But the thing is, is that I reached out offering to talk about this with Peaches because I don't have anything to hide. And Strider would consistently reach out behind the scenes to Andy and try to convince him to leave, even having him unfriend me on Steam just to seem like he went away and then re-add me later. And then him explicitly having to tell her to respect his fucking boundaries. You see, Andy's autistic, Andy has trouble communicating his feelings and stuff, and Strider I don't think she's autistic, but she knew damn well that Andy was, and that just feels like she's trying to take advantage of their personal relationship and try to tell Andy what he can and can't do with his own life. He is very well aware of my accusations, but as he says before, as somebody that's known me the longest for out of all these people, he doesn't buy into it. Most of the time when somebody doesn't expose Amy, he literally says, I give it a week. And he's right. After a week, all the Hopeless Peaches people decided to just fuck off because there's nothing definitively in the document that confirms that any of it was actually me, that I knew a lot of these people ages besides like Red Blue Player One. And on top of all of that, even if I knew their ages and said some inappropriate shit, it was very clear at the time that I had no fucking idea what I was getting myself into and I was just being an irresponsible asshole. Trying to frame it as pedophilia is sickening and disgusting when there's actual pedophiles on the internet that are actively trying to get nude photos from little girls and all kinds of other egregious shit. But what's even worse is when there's YouTubers like Hopeless Peaches, who a lot like Mama Max, and for no good reason ironically, would rather take advantage of the situation, use it for clout, and then have all these other fake activists who are slacking on Twitter pretending they give a fuck about the fictional rights of children and shit, even trying to add me to their miniature fucking blacklists, which by the way, I personally found very funny because as I've said before, while the VTuber blacklist does let you know about a lot of terrible fucking people, it's not objectively like 100% all the fucking time. As I've said before, and multiple fucking times, 
We don't know who runs the VTuber blacklist. It's anonymous. There's speculation over who does it, and they say that those people don't actively go after people that they're friends with, which would be incredibly biased, but at the same time, I've reached out to the VTuber blacklist before. I don't believe I'm on it. If I am on it, that's irresponsible on their part for their lack of research and not even beginning to reach out to me. People will like just basically make these accusations without confirming them first, and it's very clear with this group of fucking VTuber blacklist dick riders who try to expose people it's no wonder you only got 50 followers. Who the fuck cares? You know what? While we're here, let's talk about them for a second because this is just hilarious. I'm not sure if this account is ran by someone that knows me or if they're just incredibly biased in the situation, but you can tell by the way they're responding. Unlike the actual VTuber blacklist, this account is extremely unprofessional and very fucking shoddy. It even says in their bio that they just report it to the VTuber blacklist after doing their own quote unquote investigation. You never reached out to me once. You never confirmed with anybody that was actually involved. I think the only person you really talked to is Bunny Queen and her group of friends, which would consist of, like, Artemis, maybe India if she's still around. I'm not even sure if India's in this document. It would be very ironic if she wasn't, because she was also somebody that we did a video on for falsely accusing people or just being toxic in general, and then falsely accusing me afterwards. And it was rather hilarious at the time, and she was just very mad we didn't take the video down. I think she calls herself Sun Burial now. So no, that's not a new person. That's just India fainting on a new account with a new likeness because she's a furry and she's into that weird shit. But yeah, this is what I mean by don't trust these random accounts that just say random shit without being able to prove it, because I can actively prove that a lot of people in this video are not victims, never opted to be victims, or taken out of context, purely speculation, or have complete wrongdoing in their own regard. The point is, is that there's no evidence of actual pedophilia in this, it's just people trying to label it as that because they're too lazy to do the actual research. And, at the least, it was, it was just me being an irresponsible adult, not me being a groomer. I don't even know if that constitutes as it. Because I've talked to actual psychologists about it, they've looked at the document, they've seen no physical evidence of grooming, they've just seen me being a weirdo on the internet, which is completely valid. If you want to be mad at me for shit I've said and done, be mad at me for shit I've said and done. But a lot of this document is completely fucking bogus, and I'm not going to take responsibility for shit that I didn't do. Next is Tanball. Oh boy, that's a doozy. So, Tanball was a weird one because she probably didn't opt in to be a victim in this, but also didn't start saying she was a victim until way later into the friendship. Um, there's no short of saying it, but Tanball liked to be sexually active at a very young age. Uh, we didn't know her age until later on in the friendship, and she was definitely 14. She's probably 18 now, but I believe she's married, so congrats on that if she's still out there and cares, I guess. But, moral of the story is, um, and this is what I find f hilarious, she was best friends with another victim named Zane, or the Wild Squirrel or some bullshit. Zane, Wild Squirrel, or whatever the fuck they were, actually originally tried to cancel me because I didn't understand that they were trans and I made a joke that their name was Bartholomew, which, for granted, was a male name and I wasn't trying to paint them as a female and I still aren't trying to. It's just at the time, I didn't really get the whole trans thing. Keep in mind, I grew up around a lot of wrecked feminist and Ben Shapiro shit, and my friend group was really fucking transphobic. And while I later called them out on it and realized that it wasn't appropriate for me to do it, I've been avidly respectful towards the trans community since then. I've worked with trans creators. They're wonderful people. They're not any different than you and I. They just have gender dysphoria and want to be the other gender. That is a common thing. Everybody knows that is a common thing now. It is usually, like, just commonplace that transgenders exist, they're going to exist, and they're a part of society. But I digress, that's not part of the point. The point is, is that her and Tanball would purposely flirt with people that they knew were of age and put themselves in dangerous scenarios. Now, granted, that doesn't make them solely responsible because, you know, it takes two to tango, but I was never illicitly sexually involved with Tan. Maybe I said some inappropriate shit. Same thing with the Wild Squirrel Lady. But the Wild Squirrel Lady actively claimed that I dated her. Which was not fucking true. Uh, we had a few friends that shipped us because we were oddly friendly towards each other and other VCs, but I actually didn't DM this person a lot, and that leads me to speculate that, with her specifically, those screenshots just cannot be real. Because, once again, there's no Discord ID to prove that it was me. It's all just speculation. So take with that as you will. That's knocking Tanball and Bartholomew, Wild Squirrel, Zane, whatever the fuck they want me to call them out of the park. I respect your pronouns, but I don't respect your shitty behavior. Next one is Waffle. So Waffle, like the rest, was a very odd character. I don't remember where we found her. I don't remember how she got to my server. 
I don't even remember how we came to be friends. All I know is that the friendship was very short-lived because she had some IRL shit go on and she had to move on with her life. I never had any real, genuine sexual encounters with Waffle because, you know, she's 14 and I'm not into that. There was a lot of sexual jokes made, but you gotta remember, Waffle knew more about sex than anybody else in the server, and you can ask her yourself if you're willing to reach out to her. She was genuinely, like, the sex person. Alright, the last official person on this list is Horzette, and I think this one's pretty simple. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck that is. I don't even know if they consented to being in this video, let alone the document. And the fact that their age is unknown means that you don't know how old they are, which means, why did you include them in the first place? Like, if they asked to be included, by all means include them, but I feel like they would have told you their age, and seen as how you don't know their age, that just makes it incredibly irresponsible to report on that knowledge. And with that, I think I've tried to thoroughly conclude every person in the document. As you can tell from a lot of these encounters, there was no explicit sexual desire going on in the slightest. I don't know why this was painted as such, or why it was taken super seriously, because, again, pedophilia would imply that I'm trying to meet up with these girls IRL, I'm attracted to them for their young bodies, or, in the least, I'm trying to groom them to be sexualized in some form or manner. In reality, a lot of it was roleplay, not real, or just me being a fucking dumbass and saying a lot of inappropriate shit, or having areas where there was inappropriate shit, and I've actually talked about it before, and I've actively said that that was not a good representation to me, and I'm sorry for in any scenario where I possibly could have put a minor in danger. The joke was is that there were no minors that were in the danger because this document is less stupid. And I don't even know why you're trying to push this as like a bunny queen redemption story. She still clearly lied a lot. And I mean a lot in a lot of her accusations. Like actively claiming that anybody with a GXG tag is an alt. I don't have the ability to manage that many fucking alts. And keep in mind, all of our members have seen the Peaches video, they've heard my side of the story, and they understand that while I was incredibly irresponsible as a 19-year-old boy, it doesn't mean that I am actively a pedophile or a groomer. It means that I fucked up and had to acknowledge that I did some fucked up things, while also being slandered by a few of them who would fictionalize a lot of their content and try to pass it off as it being real. Again, the only things I could genuinely see being concerning in this document, like really concerning, would be the talks with Cindy, which I don't know was in the original document or wasn't. If it was, I would have talked about it sooner. But if you paid attention, the date says 2017, which means I just turned 18. But I think for me telling my side of the story with Cindy, it's very obvious that I really didn't have a fucking choice in that scenario. She threatened to kill herself, but it doesn't seem like Peaches cares. I mean, granted, Peaches might care now that she's being cancelled for being inappropriate with minors, which is like, hmm, I guess we're in the same fucking boat. And if you want to demand forgiveness, then you should probably start with the people that you were accusing of pedophilia and grooming, who you didn't even seek to try to forgive in the slightest. You just said it was all speculatory, hiding behind a disclaimer, and then actively went on to accuse me of some very heinous shit without even fucking talking to me first. I sent you an email, ma'am. I sent you a full fucking email offering to come to you and speak to you on the matter publicly, live stream it. I, do, I couldn't care. You could record the whole thing and post it. I wouldn't give it a fuck. The biggest point here is, is that the video is out and people like Bunny Queen actively post like there's still a concurrent victim. You said you were 12 years old, which by the way was a lie. She couldn't get her own fucking age right when she asked other people, which was a VTuber like Aya Yoki, to talk to her about her quote unquote accusations. She said she was 13. It's like, make up your mind, please. Was it a typo? If it was a typo, cool. You still couldn't get your age right, which is fucking weird. It was, if it was that important to you, you would think that you would get your own age right. But I digress. The point is, is that people like her will still try to paint themselves as victims, advocating for people that are victims. But in reality, nobody else has come forward. There is no, and I mean zero, new additions to this document. I get it if you want to get mad at me for being inappropriate when I was a young adult and didn't understand how the world worked, but this does not constitute as grooming. This is not me actively trying to get children to do sexual acts for me. This is just me being a fucking idiot, as idiots do. And that is completely okay. If you want to judge me for that, judge me for that. But there was no crime committed. I'm not a criminal. And anybody trying to paint me as that is being inherently dishonest to push their own agenda and just 
have a reason to fucking hate me. It's like, I get it. If you want to hate me, hate me. I'm an asshole. I make some very fucked up jokes. I don't give a fuck about anybody. But if you're going to be mad at me for that, be mad at me for that. Stop trying to push the pedophilia angle because I think it's made it very apparent that every time some fucker tries to white knight and paint me as some pedophile, it always ends the fucking same. It's somebody getting canceled later on for the exact same behavior and then asking for forgiveness or straight up lying about it happening. And then it's like, huh, pot calling the kettle black. You want to judge me, you want to sit here and say that I'm a pedophile, falsely accuse me of stuff that's not factually correct in the document, yet you're out here doing the exact same shit that you yelled at me for. I understand if there was actual factual evidence in there of me doing something wrong, but again, my friends have gone over this document, and a lot of it is speculatory because you can't prove it was fucking me. I haven't touched the Peaches video, I haven't touched the For No Good Reason video, I did think that the For No Good Reason videos counted as doxing when they were trying to use my IRL phone number to contact me, especially when that was not public information and that actually was constituted as doxing thanks to Striderfan28 who actually gave it to them and I'm not going to take that back. She is the one that gave them my real phone number and actively tried to assist in canceling me just to come back and apologize later and then backtrack on it the moment Hopeless Peaches was involved in something. You've helped no one. The only people you've helped is yourselves. You post about it consistently because you want attention and clout. It's that simple. If you wanted to actually help, you would go to the police. But as Bunny Queen has said before, she won't go to the police because she's black and she's scared but the big mean police are going to shoot her. That is a racist stereotype and defames the police in every sense of the fucking word. And judging from the way she said it, she wouldn't fucking know that because she never reached out to him. As been discovered by other VTubers who she's tried to get to listen to the story. Give me a list of Discord tags. I will go through my DMs and show you that with half of these women, I've never fucking DM'd them. You're not going to find anything because there's no DMs from these people. Which is oddly strange seeing as how they're complaining and saying that I've DM'd them. But there's no proof in my DMs. The speculation is that I deleted an account. Okay, me deleting an account doesn't make me a pedophile. It doesn't add to your list of things that I've done wrong. And again, you should have more proof than I deleted an account and a bunch of people who didn't opt in to be saying shit were saying shit that I did. There was just a lot of weird RP shit, but there wasn't an intimate sexual relationship where I actively DM'd them and stuff. And I've never admitted to that once. The moral of this story is, is that it was incredibly irresponsible for a YouTuber as big as Hopeless Peaches to post the content that she posted and call it justified. When in reality, she didn't reach out to any of the victims. She didn't reach out to me. If you didn't reach out to anybody, you have no personal involvement with anybody in this. And you capitalized on it because a bunch of YouTubers were salty that got banned from Fillion's talent server for bitching and whining like a bunch of drama tubers. Yeah, that's what happens when you try to involve drama in a place where we're all supposed to be professional. It was a networking server. It was for other creators to meet other creators. Hopeless Peaches and people like Hopeless Peaches empower these idiots who genuinely try to push themselves as victims when in reality, what danger were they put in? A lot of this was roleplay, speculatory screenshots, and stuff that never fucking happened. So, who's in danger? Who are you helping? You're only helping yourself. You're helping yourself get a few views on your YouTube channel. You're up in your bank account just like Hope and Pizza did. I, I know damn well she made some ad sense off that video if she properly did it. Unless YouTube decided to sack up and not pay her, which would be very pog on their part. And the point is, is that the entire time this selfless individual was pretending that she was trying to help minors and assist them, she was doing the exact same shit that she was accusing me of. She wasn't personally attached to this situation. This was just another gig for her. This was just another video. And it really shows with the piss-poor attitude she portrayed throughout the entire video, the fact that she reached out to no one, and the mishandlement of a lot of the evidence in the document. And that's all I've got to say. On that note... Uh, unless a new mysterious, like, challenger for the victim trope is gonna pop up on Twitter and claim that I diddled them or something, uh, I'm wiping my hands clean of it. You're gonna be a clout-chasing hungry YouTuber that wants to jump on this trend and paint me as some kind of pedophile? Then you're just as bad as Mama Max and Hopeless Peaches, and you're irresponsible, and shouldn't be allowed anywhere near situations like that. Chris Hansen would be disappointed. Thank you guys for watching.